Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honey Bee Stamps. Today we are going to be using a couple of products. We're using the Love Jar or Love Potion Jars and the little labels that match. Um, a little note, I showed you the stamp set, the dies and the stencil. You can either use the um, stamp or the stencil for the te technique we're doing. And then um, I'm also using these beautiful blooms. Um, so some of these are newer, some of them are older. You guys know I like kind of mixing and matching what I have because I think that that's more accurate. Like that's how I did it before I did it as a job. I, you know, I used the things that I had that I really liked and I really like this set. So here I'm working on Nina 80 pound solar white cardstock and I am stamping in our intense black ink, which is safe for alcohol markers. Um, I will be coloring with my Copics today. So here I didn't get a great impression the first time around, but I don't really think I took the time to ink it up either. Um, sometimes I get a lazy about that. Am I the only one? Um, so anyway, thankfully for the Misty, I can go back in and just ink it up a second time and um, stamp it down again. Sometimes those um, more detailed stamps, which I do love, um, can be a little bit tricky to get in there and make sure that I have enough ink coverage. So once that is stamped, we're going to move on to the coloring. Now, you may be asking yourself, based on the title of this video, what do I mean when I'm talking about repurposing um, stamps? I don't mean the actual stamps themselves. I mean the images. So for example, in today's card, we're going to be using two um, stamps a little differently than maybe you would originally think or the way that they were in intended. Um, and so this cute little, I love these jars. I know you guys have heard me say that before and that <laughs> that is completely true. I think that they are so cute. Um, and the little potion jars, um, they have another set that are like... Um, they aren't the loved ones, they're different shapes, but I love them both equally. Um, but so here I thought that they would be a fun thing to color as like this little perfume bottle, but then to get it to be the holder um, for these flowers. And I don't mean like, you know, that you would have the stems going into the water. Obviously you wouldn't do that with perfume, I'm pretty sure you'd kill your flowers. Um, but what I mean is uh, when I was looking um, at like inspiration, I saw a couple and I had so many ideas for this card and I just had to finally be like, Kelly, whittle it down. You can always make another card. <laughs> you can always make another card. Um, but so I thought that I would kind of replace the flowers on top as almost like the lid to the jar because uh, I had seen a couple of different um, illustrations and things like that, and I super liked it. I thought it was really cute. And so when I was going through the Honey Bee stamps that I had, there were a couple of possibilities. Um, so if you don't have this stamp set, but you do have um, the Tea Time Florals, that would be a good one. Um, the, what is the other one? The fr Farm farm fresh flowers, farm cut flowers. I think it's farm fresh flowers. Um, that's another one that has kind of like a smaller bouquet or grouping that would work well. Um, so otherwise I chose this one cause I liked it the best. Uh, I am going to, you saw me color my bottle. The reason that I left the lid uncolored is because I figured my flowers would cover it up. I'm going to be honest with you. I did have to go back in and um, color portions of that because of just how the floral is laid on top of the bottle. Another thing to note here, I'm coloring in my perfume and I chose to do orange. And the reason I chose to do orange is because I knew I was going to put it on a navy background and orange is blue's natural complement. However, you can see when I did the like the rounding of the bottle, the left hand side is a little bit higher than the right hand side. And at the time, I didn't really think it was going to make a difference. It did make a difference. It made it look as almost like that my bottle was a little bit um, like off center, like it was tilted or crooked uh, in the end result. And so when you're doing that, if you choose to color it the way that I chose to color it, I would just try to make sure that your sides dip down to the same level so you don't have the same <laughs> problem that I did. Um, I don't know like if it's noticeable to anybody else in the finished piece, but it's definitely noticeable to me um, af like after it was all pulled together. 
So anyway, so I went through, did lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest, and my lightest color really is, you know, going to be my highlight color along the front end of the liquid and then in the center where we're making it look a little bit more 3D. If you're interested in learning more about coloring the bottles, I have a whole other video. Oh, actually I have two. Um, but there's one specifically where I show four different ways to color in the bottles. So now we're going to move on to the florals. I've also used the stamp set in the past. Super like it. Um, it's partner, it's companion floral in the same set includes like the leaves and some berries and stuff but I went with the smaller one because my jar is a little bit on a smaller scale and these florals are already um, pushing the envelope to be maybe a little bit bigger than my jar but I feel like they make a statement and I'm okay with it. So I used my oranges to color in this center here and then let's talk about this little flower. So when I originally decided I was going to do this little flower, I looked up mums. That's what these flowers are. And there was one that was like yellow with like pink tips. And that's originally what I was going for. And because of the pink and the yellows that I chose, ultimately I didn't end up liking them together, which sometimes happens. But I also was not willing to recolor the entire image. So I'm going to show you a little trick for how to fix that if you color something and you're like, you know what, I don't really love these colors together. Um, so hang tight, that will be more toward the end of the coloring portion of the video. So what's going on? What's going on with life? Um, well, the party is tomorrow. Uh, Peanut and I did manage to get all of our running around on yesterday, so that was good. We got him a haircut. He's in this stage right now where he really wants to grow out the top of his hair, um, which is so funny to me because, like, the way he's tossing his head back is, like, I don't know, early 2000s emo kid, and I'm like, why is this back in style again? <laughs> why is this back in style again? Isn't it too soon for this? But I know that like fashion and trends are, you know, cyclical and things come back around. I just feel like I'm not old enough for this trend to be back in fashion, but maybe I'm wrong. I did have a lot of kids, um, like when I was in middle school, high school that did the, you know, like back and sides were shaved and they like, the top was long, but it was like slicked back. He doesn't want that. He wants it hanging over his forehead at an angle. Like you can still see his eyeballs. Um, but he wants the back and the sides short. So I guess, I mean, it is what it is. I, I let him do what he wants to do because ultimately it, it is his hair. But there are other haircuts we've had that I, I like more than this one. Not that I tell him that. <laughs> Not that I tell him that. So, um, so here, now everything is colored. I realized that I'm not really loving it. So I went back in with the darker pink to see maybe if I extended that a little bit further, if I would like it more, and then blended it out with the lighter pink. This was like meh, middle of the road for me. I wasn't mad at it, but I didn't love it. So I decided I'll just leave it. I'll move on to the next flower and then we'll see what they look like all together before I make a decision about what I'm going to do with it ultimately. So I normally I color lightest to darkest and then darkest to lightest, but this has a lot going on. Um, and because it, I love these kinds of stamps, but I know that they can be overwhelming. Um, so because it's got multiple layers, because, you know, that's how mums are. They got a lot of layers. Um, I'm going to go in and map in my shadows with my darkest color. You want to make sure that you're leaving plenty of white area. You're not just like going in super heavy handed with your dark. If you are a person who is heavy handed like I am typically, you probably want to start with your lightest color to map your shadows. But because I've colored this image before and I'm a little bit more comfortable with it, like this isn't my first go around, I felt okay going in with my darkest color to do my mapping. And then also because the more ink you lay down, the more chance you have of your ink bleeding outside of your images. This is not usually a problem for me, but just to be sure I was going to be able to maintain my highlights, which 
the shadows and the highlights are what give us the dimension and separation of the petals. Um, I just felt like it was better for me to go in with my darkest color first and then work my way out to my lightest. But you will see that as I am adding more color, there is always white left on the petal up until I get to my lightest color. Um, so that's what we are doing there. I will warn you with the other mum, the one on the right hand side, I did that in the same oranges that I did the perfume in and that one is a little bit more sped up. Um, when you're laying in shadows, you want to look at first and foremost where the illustrator has put the shading lines. So with these flowers, typically they're in the center because mum leaves can be kind of folded over on the edges. So the illustrator will put a line in the center to let you know that it should be darker there. And then we're also um, adding shadows any place where one object lays on top of another. So where one petal is on top of another, that underneath petal will have shadow. And then any place where they meet. So where you have one petal next to each other, you will have to pick a petal that you want to be underneath is if it's not apparent by the drawing. Um, you just pick one that you want to be underneath and then you add the shadows there as well. So now we're out to our lightest color. And here, because of I'm using the RVs, um, which this RV02 will lighten up the RV04 quite a bit. I'm not going in and just covering the whole thing. I am only adding my lightest color and then flicking inward toward the petal to get them to blend. Um, but the reason is, is be just specifically because with this color combination, it can really lift that uh, darker pink. So again, these are, this one here in the center, it's a little bit more concentrated. I am starting with my darkest color, but again, you will see that there is plenty of white left, and that is to just make sure I maintain that highlight and that separation so that the center of my flower doesn't look super flat. Um, so anywho. Our next stop after we went and got his haircut was to the party supply store, which I think I've told you guys this before. I always go to the same place, like small mom and pop shop. So fortunately, we were able to um, get plates, things like that um, for like decorations. Not going to, you know, all out crazy, uh, seeing as how it's an adult birthday party versus one of my children's birthday parties but so enough that it still kind of feels a little bit festive in our in our household um so still left on my to-do list is cake making uh and so i asked eric what he what kind of cake he wants and no surprise he picked the same chocolate peanut butter one that he has had i think for the last <laughs> three years i thought he might want something different but he said no so um I will be making that tomorrow before the party. Um, fortunately, we are very lucky. Oh, wait, go back to the card. So here is how I decided to fix it. I picked a color that is an analogous color, meaning it's next to this one on the on the color wheel um, because I had like these um, yellow oranges. And so I went with a pink and I just glazed right over that. The shadows that I already added are still going to be there. It is enough that it's a different tone from the true pink um, without anything underneath it, but it's still complementary. Like it will go with the other two flowers because adding, you know, pink and yellow together, you're going to get orange. Um, and then that way they all play nicely together. So if you have a situation where you don't necessarily love the color that you've used, like if you've used a blue and you don't love it, you can go over it with a pink, a violet, or a green, um, or even a yellow, honestly, if you wanted to completely change the tone. But if you look at the colors that are next to it on the color wheel, that is how you can change it without having to recolor the entire thing all over again. You just change the uh, hue that you have there by color glazing right over top of it. For my leaves, because I knew my background was navy, I went with yellow greens uh, because I personally like a bright yellow green with a navy. Um, and then here what you see me doing is 
the little note set has a 3D banner die in it. And so I cut that out to house my sentiment um, and I cut out all three pieces. I will tell you that um, it has two um, like of the full banner. One is the base for the 3D and one is actually to cut out the stamped version. And when I cut mine, I cut out the stamped version. Um, so I did have to recut the base of it again because it was just a little too big. I was like, why is this not making friends with each other? But that is why, because I selected the wrong one. And then I just cut all these out with my um, Bitty Buzz cutter, ran these through. I didn't even have to get up from my desk, which I always appreciate um, because my die cutting situation is not the best. It's kind of like over underneath some cabinets. Uh, so if I can sit at my desk and do it, I always uh, appreciate that. In order to add shading to my banner, I just held like one piece uh, in place over the other and then just went in with some cool grays. I did not show you, I apologized. I use a C1, a C3, and a C5, um, but whatever grays you have, warm, cool, toner, if you have a different brand, like whatever you got, it'll it'll work. Just pick a very light medium and then a mid tone for your dark. Um, because we're just adding shadows to the banner, we still want it to appear white. Um, and then I will put the third piece on top here and kind of trace the bottom edges of that to get the shadows for there. And then for my top piece, I always add a little bit of shadow like coming in from the left and right hand side. Uh, and that just helps to give the banner just a little bit more shape. Um, because it is, you know, even though we've we've die cut it, uh, it doesn't have any um, like embossing or anything like that to give it any extra added detail. And so doing the coloring of the dies will help give them um, more form or more shape and make them kind of stand out a little bit more. Once I am done with this, then I am going to move on to the second portion that we are repurposing. So in this, the little note, this is made to be a focal point. It's a stamp that has a stencil. Um, it also has die cuts. You can cut it out. Um, you can cut the little heart out individually, but I'm actually gonna use it to create texture in my background. Um, so here is my navy cardstock. I am going to stamp this down with clear embossing ink after I treat it with my anti-static tool. And um, I normally would use Honeybee's uh, clear embossing ink, but I cannot find it at the moment. I'm not sure if I lost it in my drawer or if my child took it, um, but I'll be substituting with Versamark today. And then I am just going to stamp this down and I'm going to heat emboss this in clear. This will give me a raised texture in my background that is not going to compete with my design, but it is going to help it look more full on the paper. So the area where my perfume jar is, where it's definitely more narrow, and then comes up into this like huge bouquet. This is gonna give me some balance in the design as well as create some tone on tone texture. You could do this in another color if you wanted, but if you do it in another color, just know it's really gonna become a lot more a part of your design. Doing it tone on tone makes it more subtle. If you don't, if you chose not to buy the stamp, but you bought the stencils, you could do the same thing with the stencils. You would just use like a blending brush or um, a foam pad to blend on the Versamark um, so that it would create that pattern in the background. It probably would not be as detailed because the stencils are created to be open, but it would still be enough that you would have um, some tone on tone going on in the background. Alternatively, if you wanted tone on tone going on in the background that still matched, you could use a 3D embossing folder. You could use um, the flowers. We could like stamp those in the background and clear heat emboss them. All of that would work, uh, but this one I was already kind of sized well for that and it gave me another way to use that stamp set that I've already paid money for. So here, Everything is die cut out. You saw me do all my stamping on top of my jar and for my sentiment. And now I'm going to build the whole card. I am gluing my little banner together. Um, 
using my Honeybee Precision Glue, which is what I'll be adhering everything with today. This is another one that I added no dimension to. I know that you are shocked. Um, but I'm going to lay everything out here. And then because I don't like the white outline, and everybody is different. If you don't mind the white outline, then that's fine. This is not for you. But if you are a person who doesn't love the white outline, like I don't love the white outline, I always color mine. Um, but because my bottle is clear, like my perfume bottle is clear, I do have to take that into account. It wouldn't be white behind my perfume. It would be navy. And so I'm just going to kind of hold everything in place down here at the bottom to glue my leaves um, behind the bottle so that I can uh, accommodate for the portion of the leaves that you would see behind it. Um, ultimately, at the end of the day, I'm going to show you how to do it, but you really can't even see <laughs> you really can't even see it in the finished project because when I added my highlights with my white gel pen, it happened to just go right over this little sliver of green that would have been the leaf, and that's all you would have seen. But um, you will see that I'm going to color in the background. I did the darker navy around the edges and then just a little bit of a lighter navy so that it wasn't exactly the color of the background. Um, because I don't think when you're looking through something, the colors are always exactly the same. Like you have a little tint from the bottle. Now my bottle is like a light, lighter blue, so I don't really know how much of a difference that would truly make, but I tried to keep that in mind while I was doing my coloring. So I'm going to go through and do that, and then I will start to color in my edges of my leaves and my bottle. The only edges that I did not color in before I put everything together is that of the flowers because it is the top piece. It will have um, more colors in that outline. So it'll have some navy where it sits on the navy, but it's also going to have some green where the leaves are tucked behind. It'll have some blue where it's up against, like light blue where it's up against the bottle, and so on and so forth. So I did not do the flower until the very end after everything was put together. So, anywho, we did the party supply pickup. Um, which was good. We were able to get everything that we needed. And then the last step that we went to um, is it's called GFS. I don't know if you have those, but basically it's like bulk buying um, for catering and things like that. And so we went there and I was able to pick up some um, like little dessert things, salad, like large bags of like pre-cut washed salad um, and bread I was looking for maybe another side um, because my mom and my sister don't eat. Uh, well, my mom eats pasta, um, but my sister doesn't. Um, so just to make sure that they had other options, we are also having pizza. So they may just end up with that. But like every side that they had, I totally would have eaten. They had like mac and cheese and like pulled pork and um, scalloped potatoes. Like they had sides that you could make that you just like throw in the oven. Uh, but my sister will eat none of those. <laughs> we'll eat none of those things. Um, so it's funny when people say to me like that I'm a picky eater because I know the family that I come from and I am like the least picky of the eat. Well, no, Michelle might be. Michelle might be the least picky of all the eaters, but I'm I'm a pretty close second. So now all of the background coloring is done. I added some white highlights into the center of my flower as well as onto the perfume bottle. Um I wanted to also add some shimmer. So before I did the highlights on the perfume bottle, I wanted and added some glitter um, to that as well as to the flowers. And then I went in and did my white highlights just so I wouldn't have to wait for them to dry um, and not smear them all around whatever I was doing. And then like, that's it. That's the, the whole card. So the next time I see you guys, it will, the party will have been done and over. So wish us the best of luck and happy birthday to my wonderful husband. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.